Alrighty, hello everyone. This is going to be a different type of stream, as you can see in the chan as you can see in the the channel title for this stream. I am going to be reviewing for my organic chemistry test I have tomorrow, and so I have my stack of flashcards of the reactions for the test. They involve things called carboxylic acids. So you basically have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and to the sides of that carbon you have for the other two bonds you have a bond to an OH and a bond to an R but then you also have derivatives where that OH is switched out with a different group of molecules and atoms so yeah I just thought I'd just experiment and you know review on Twitch so that way I'm actually forced to go through all of these and um draw them all out you know I am also going to put some music in the background, but please don't copyright me. This is actually just some of the pieces I've been arranging, and they're basically played by not real people. So it's basically a playback from you score. So I'm just going to find a piece to get us started, and let's go from there. All right, I'm just going to put this on. Come on, please work. All right, it's going to start in a bit. And that all out of the way, let's continue. Or I should say, let's start this review. So once again, these are the flashcards of all the reactions that will be on the test tomorrow from all our notes and whatnot. We have a ton to get through, so why? let's get started, shall we? If you're new to the channel, I want to give you a big welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is one who gets bread. I usually stream Pokemon and music content, but today we're going to do something different because I have a test tomorrow. I just wanted to review and hang out with all of you while I'm studying. So without further ado, let's get into this big stack of index cards that I made out of <laughs> coupon band paper. All right, let's do this. Just some background music. Hopefully it's not going to get copyright. I mean, it's my own arrangement of something, so. All right, our first one is, should I start from the back? So these are like the most recent chapter that we went through. So I guess I'll start with the most recent chapter. We have this molecule. So we have a site that's, this is going to be an amide. As you can see, we have a carboxylic acid derivative here that's an amide or an amide then we also have a carboxylic acid over here and this is h2o and it's going to be acidic h2o so acidic water conditions and so on this one if i remember it correctly i'm going to just draw it out um i need more sheets of paper i guess uh let's just do it on here shall we I think what we're going to be doing in this one, so acidic, that's going to get rid of this leaving group, I think. And so we're actually going to make amides. So we're actually going to add protons to those areas. All right, let's do that then. This one's going to be a tricky one. I actually don't remember it well, so I kind of had to cheat on my first one and look in the back. And we have something that looks like that, I think, NH2. Oh, NH3. All right, so I got that one mix, mixed up. So NH3, but that's kind of weird because that one has four. Hmm. So he's NH3 and I guess, oh well, NH3 plus. So that's NH3. And then you also have another amide, which uh, I mean, yeah, an amide from this side too, because of that, this carbonyl group. So we're just going to draw another one, I guess. So let's do that. Oh. I'm gonna do that benzene ring like that. We have our NH2. Let me see if I'm doing this correctly. Yeah. All right, so we have our NH2 like that. Then we have our carbonyl group, that's a carbon to an oxygen, and then the OH. Looks like we actually 
drew the wrong product. There's supposed to be a bond right here. There we go. So it looks like we're just going to keep everything like that. We're going to replace this amide with an OH because it's acidic water. So we're just going to do that over here. And this becomes NH3. There we go. That was kind of sloppy, but again, I don't really remember this reaction, to be honest. And so let's just continue. We might get the other ones as we move on. All right, this one is an amide, and the example is a, is a secondary amide. So that means this amide is going to have a nitrogen bond to two, to two R's, or to two carbons, and one hydrogen. So I'm just going to do that over here. And we'll just do the simple version of it. And again, R. That R, R prime up there means it's just a different carbon, or it's just going to be a carbon group on that side. So we have our secondary amide. And we're going to do basic conditions this time. So H2O, OH, that's OH minus, that's hydroxide, it's a base. And so uh, we, how are we going to do this? I think what we need to do is just go like that. It's going to cleave that. And I think we just get the carboxyl anion. Let me see. Oh, we are correct. Oh, I forgot about that product. Okay, so let's go back here and see what we can do to it. That's going to leave. So then we're going to get an NH to the R, but since that isn't very good, I think we just add, so we basically went backwards. In some of these reactions, when you put the nitrogen group molecule onto the carboxylic acid derivative, you remove an H, so I guess since we're taking that off, we'll need to add an H to it, so we get an H2 bonded to an R, R prime group, which is just a carbon substituent or a carbon chain of some kind and it looks like we got it correct all right moving on now this is acidic conditions with an amide and the example is a is a primary amide because it's only bonded to the one carbon right here and it has two hydrogens and again acidic conditions i am just going to probably use this let's just use this secondary amide up here as our example so i don't have to draw too many things so again acidic conditions that h plus all righty i'm gonna move this down here so be seen in view what we're trying to guess what it is i think this is going to make carboxylic acid so i have the roh and maybe it has the side product of nh3 I'm guessing no, it probably does have NH3, but it's not it's not an organic product, and this is the major product, so we did get it correct. All right. Actually, I'm going to write, so there's 35 of them, right? 35. We are we got the first one kind of wrong, so I'll do a minus minus one. So right now, so plus two. I'll just keep erasing that, I guess, as we go. Or no, each time we get one right, I'll just do it. I'll just do a tally mark. So we got two so far from doing three. Those cards. All right, next one. This one we have an ester on the left as the reagent, and we're going to react it with an amine. Or yeah, that could be an amine. All right. Or it could also be NH three. Because that R could be a car, it could be a group of carbons or hydrogen. So, I guess it's just a pick and choose on this one. Let's go with. Let's just do one with NH three. R. O. R. R prime. So that's our ester. We're going to react it with NH three, and we're expecting an amide as the product. An amide would be something like this. But we also have to take a look at our actual nitrogen reagent that we're using. Because when we add the nitrogen group, we'll want to keep any carbons with it. So any R groups, we don't have any. But 
We'll also want to remove one of the hydrogens, so we'll actually get NH2. Actually, I'm going to erase that H and just do this. There we go. And of course, on the side, I think we would have whatever the leaving group of that OR as a call, but it doesn't look like we're going to do that. This is the back of that. Again, they I used a different version of that but still the same process if this was if this was an h2 and it was bonded to an ethyl an ethyl chain here so two carbon chain we would get an again an amide or we'll remove one of the hydrogens so nh and it'll still keep that ethyl so we'll get that secondary amide instead of a primary one if it was NH2 with an R group, which is this ethyl. Alrighty, next one. So we got that one correct. This one's interesting. This is a large excess of an alcohol mixing with an ester. So let's try this at one out. So I'm just going to do a generic. It's better um, to study the generic versions of all the reactions because there's so many patterns in organic chem, and it's also a memorization class, so why not you just um, memorize the patterns, is what my chem professor always said. <laughs> she really wanted to detail this test, especially because of all the reactions. There's 35 of them, or there's going to be more of them, but 35 basic forms of the reactions, you know? And so yeah, it's better to memorize just the just the patterns, and I think that's the key to organic chem, as she's been saying. All right, so we have our alcohol. I'm gonna make it R double prime just to say that might be a different R group than what we have over here. And again, an R group is just carbons, a group of carbons bonded to the OH, making an alcohol. And we have acidic conditions down here because of that H plus and a large excess. I guess we'll just add LXS for large excess. All right, so usually when you're reacting an alcohol, you're going to just get another ester. But since we have an ester here with the singular prime, I think what we're going to get here is we're just going to replace that R that's bonded to the O. So I think we're going to replace it with this R from the alcohol. And then that would mean we would also get OH, but this time the R is the singular. So that's just differentiating from two different carbons. And it looks like we got we got that one correct. Actually, we probably don't need that, but we got the major product correct where we're going to replace this ester with a different ester. We're just going to replace the alkoxy group with the alkoxy group, as you can see. So again, this used to be R single prime, but now it's R double prime. That R double prime is from the alcohol. Alrighty, I'm going to switch to a different song again. These are just pieces by Bach that I kind of arranged for different instruments. They used to be like choral pieces, but I just moved all the soprano, alto, tenor, bass parts to like actual instruments instead of voices. Alrighty, enough about that because I'm going to go and ramble on about classical music if I don't stop. Alrighty, our next one again, Esther. And we have basic conditions with H2O. Perfect. All right, let's just use this. I'll just continue with this. So we'll make a line again. H2O, OH minus. All righty, so what are we going to do here? That basic conditions with most of these derivatives, it's going to make that carboxylic anion. So R over here and an O. Don't draw the OH. It's not a, car it's not a carboxylic acid but you're just going to keep the O there, make sure to put a negative. So I think that's going to be a correct answer. Oh, we forgot the alcohol because we have this removed, don't we? Forgot about the alcohol. That's one of the ones I think you need to draw two products for. Usually if it's um, an organic minor product or whatnot like that, I think we're supposed to draw it. I think esters might be the only ones that have that kind of stuff, and maybe some of the things using amides, because you get the R group from some of the reactions when it leaves. So we got the carboxylate anion. We just forgot the 
alcohol that also comes off as well, because if we have this as a leaving group, it's going to meet up with an H somewhere or something like that. It's going to just form an alcohol. All right, I am going to actually discount that one. We've got the major product. All right, next one. Ooh, this is our ester again. Let me show it on. Let me show it on the camera. It's our ester again, and we're going to react it now with water, but in acidic conditions. So that H plus. You can also see this as H three O plus, but this here is just an H with a plus. So acidic conditions. To put that up there, I don't know if it could be still seen on camera. There we go. I'm just going to draw underneath this and put H2O, H plus, like that. All right, so if it was H2O under basic, we got the carboxylate anion. So if it's acidic with H2O, I think we're going to get our carboxylic acid, so the actual carboxylic acid. And again, the alcohol, so I'm going to make that a plus sign, R-O-H. There you go. Let's see. Boom, we got that one. All right. Perfect. I think the one we missed was that big weird one, the first, the number 35. I'm going to put the ones that we miss up here. Miss. I'm going to write miss. I think it's off camera, but I'm tallying all the ones we've been getting correct and the ones we've not been getting correct. So let's just continue on. All right, so now we switch to a different reagent. Now we're doing carboxylic acid reactions. This time it's basic and it's just NH3. So since NH3 is going to be a basic reagent, it's going to be basic conditions, we don't have anything else. There's a reaction where it's going to be NH3 with heat. That delta, that triangle symbol there, it's called a delta, and that means heat. If it's a carboxylic acid, and NH3 and heat, so NH3 is ammonia, so ammonia and heat, you're just going to get A, or I should say anamide, or amide. So if this was the reaction, which it isn't, it's just NH3 up here, but if it was the thing with the delta, we would get something like this and NH2 right there. But since it's just NH3, I have a sneaking suspicion. Let me flip this to the side quickly, and we're getting a neat sheet of paper. I could I could just use the back of this, I guess. That's fine. Just flip it over after each one. I'm going to draw my carboxylic acid this time right around here, and I'm going to just draw the, the regular form, the basic form of a carboxylic acid, which is just the generic R, and then those bonds in the OH. So making something fancy, I'm just going to do that. So there's our carboxylic acid. Our first reaction is just NH3. So I'm just going to put ammonia at the top. And I think what this does, because this is basic, there's a B for basic, I'm going to just do the carboxylic anion. Carboxylate anion, sorry about that. So when one of these derivatives is in basic conditions, so it's like H2O, OH minus, whatnot. If there's an OH minus, there's a base negatively charged reagent over the arrow. Pretty sure it just makes the carboxylate anion. All right, let's see if we got that one correct. All right, oh, we need to add the NH4. That's probably going to have to be there on the test. All righty, there we go. Gonna count that one. Alrighty, our next one is also a carboxylic acid reaction because these are done in order of the notes and the chapters and they kind of section them off in the same molecules. So, this one, let's see. We have DCC and this is specific to carboxylic acids when you're reacting with an amide, it looks like. So this amide is, this is a primary amide because we have... We have NH2, and there's only one R group. Again, R groups are carbons bonded to that atom, the N, or any atom here. So those are just carbons bonded. R group is a, carb a group of carbons. All right. So let's do another arrow, and we're going to put DCC. Again, DCC needs to be there for carboxylic acids if you're doing amides. I'm going to do R prime NH2. And we still have our carboxylic acid over there. All right, so now again attaching a nitrogen reagent or whatnot 
to one of these derivatives, what you do is you add everything where the OH was. So this OH is going to be a leaving group. So you take it off and don't change anything else in the molecule, except we're going to put the N, N with its R group over here. But we are going to remove one of the hydrogens. So we're going to get a, a secondary amide instead of NH2 with an R. It's just going to be NH and then an R. And we got it correct. All right, we're on a roll here. All right, next one. So NH3 is the one we did earlier, so I'm not actually going to draw it. This is going to make this is going to make a primary amide. There we go. All right, that's that's another that's another win on the tally board. There we go. Yeah. I had to make sure I made only four tallies there. I almost got confused. Okay, so this one's kind of interesting. I haven't seen this before. So we have carboxylic acid and a base. So this base is just a... Um, just an anion. I, I don't think it's anything specific. It's just a base. All right, for this one... Oh, this one's actually kind of tricky. I can't really remember what this one does. I think what it does is, hmm, does it make an ester? No, that's not an alcohol. I think this is just basic conditions, regular basic conditions. Let's see. I am going to just, yep, it was just going to make that anion. I'm going to just count that as a, as a loss. We didn't get that one. I stalled too long. I couldn't remember it. So missing, what's this one? 25. All right, let's continue. Hopefully we'll get this next one. All right, this is a carboxylic acid with an alcohol group on it, and we're going to do it in acidic conditions. As you can see, we have a very strong acid there, H2SO4. Don't drink that stuff. That's pretty bad. It's very dangerous sulfuric acid. All right, so OH and we have our carboxylic acid. This one I remember you're going to make a cyclic a cyclic ester, which is called a, lactan a lactone, not a lactam, that's a cyclic amide, but we're going to make the lactone. So uh, we're going to do this. I'm going to just draw this one out because it's, pr it's pretty interesting. All right, so I'm missing a methyl. There we go. So I'm going to number one, two, three, four, five. So we have five molecules, five atoms, I should say, actually five atoms. It's not the carbon chain that we're numbering, it's just five atoms. So in that skeletal structure, as you can see, the O, the carbon, the carbon, the carbon, the carbonyl carbon, five. All right, so now what are we going to do is basically there's a weird old mechanism for this that we were actually um, supposed to do an assignment, and it has a bunch of steps. So I'm just going to go over it really quickly. I'm not going to do all the steps, but this is just like the final product of it. So as you can see, we have five atoms in that skeletal structure. We're going to draw a five atom cyclic figure. So that would be a pentagon. I'm going to put the O as one of those. I'm going to put the O as one of those molecules. I should say atoms, not molecules. Sorry about that. So I'm going to number it. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And now we have a methyl on three. So we're going to keep that in there. And on five, we have that. We have that carbonyl. So we have a double bonded oxygen to the fifth molecule in there. So we're going to keep it like that. Let's see if we got it correct. All right. I think I think we got it. We got it. Again, that's a cyclic east ester, not Easter. Easter is coming up, but this is an ester, and it's a lactone because it's a cyclic one. All right, I think we got that one. That's one of the weirder ones in the in the um, study guide in the notes. I made sure I knew that one for sure, just in case it popped up on the test. All right, next one, carboxylic acid again. And this time it's an alcohol, and it can be an acidic conditions. All right, so alcohol plus a carboxylic acid derivative usually makes an ester because the alcohol has an R group and 
one of the groups that we have is an ester, which is an O and an R attached in here instead of an OH. So this makes an ester, I think. Let's do that. This actually has to be H2. So four, I'm going to just add that quickly. But now we're back to our carboxylic acid, which looks like this. And this time we're doing an alcohol ROH. And I'm going to just draw an ester. O R. There we go. Let's see if we're correct. There we go. We got it correct. Alrighty, I'm going to make another tally. We're about oh we still have a lot to go. Let's let's pick up the pace a little bit. Okay, so this is a diacid. This is a very interesting molecule. As you can see, it has two carboxylic acids. There's one and there's a second one. And we're just reacting it with heat. This is one of those weird reactions. I'm gonna just draw this. This, there we go, and mirror it on the other side. Voila, and we have heat. Again, the delta symbol, that triangle means heat. And I remember this one very well. We're going to do this. We're going to close it up like that. One of these is going to go away. You're going to close up that thing like that. So it makes a one, two, three, four, five, five-sided figure. You would think there would be a bond like this. Nope, that's incorrect. You want to make basically a pentagon over here. So drawing a bond in between like that is incorrect. What you want to do is basically this looks like a hexagon. You subtract one of the sides and you put those two corners meeting up at the oxygen. And now you just add the double bonded oxygens to each side. And we get something called a cyclic anhydride. Yep, a cyclic anhydride, and usually an anhydride looks something like this, where instead of the OH, like the carboxylic acid, we have this whole other group over here. So that's a regular, that's a non, or I should say an acyclic anhydride. This one's a cyclic. So let's see how we did. All right, we got it. I think we drew it better in here, though, but... Oh, well, we still got the cyclic and hydride. That's all that matters. Alrighty, I think the music ended, so I'm going to go and select another song in a bit. Got another one in the bag. SOCl2. Now, this one, basically, if you react with an OH on a molecule or replace it with Cl, or replace it with a chlorine. So, again, it says only alcohols and carboxylic acids because they have the that OH in them. So what we're going to do is we're going to just write this again. We're just going to replace that OH leaving group on the carboxylic acid again. It needs to be a carboxylic acid or an alcohol for us to do something with it. We're going to replace that OH with a Cl. We're going to make an acid chloride. Here we are and Cl. There we go. Let's see if we got it correct. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay, what's our next one? All right, so this is a symmetric anhydride, and we're going to react it with an alcohol. Anhydrides could be mixed or symmetric. We have a symmetric one here, so we draw less products. If it was mixed, then we have to draw more products, and that I don't think anyone wants to do that, honestly. It just clutters everything, you know? All right, let's go and draw this thing. More music. Alrighty, so I think what we need to do for this, I'm going to just draw a very simple symmetric anhydride like that, R-O-H for alcohol, and if I remember this one correctly, it's just the carboxylic acid and maybe our carboxylate, if I remember, I think those are the two products, let me see. Oh, man, we totally missed that one. There's an ester instead. So the OH, that, so that carboxylic acid was correct. This was incorrect. It's supposed to be, it was supposed to be an ester, and we used the R. We used the R from the alcohol. Oh, man. Oh, man. So we got that one wrong. So I'm going to make a mark of it. So I'm going to go... 
keep a tally of the ones we get wrong as well. We'll go back and take a look at them once we're finished. Alrighty, we're about... So I have 35 of them. Um, we're about halfway through, so just a little bit more. This one's a mixed and hydride with H2O. This one's tricky. I can't remember this one either, to be honest. I'm j I am just know that um, it's going to make a carboxylic acid. That's all I know. I think there's two carboxylic acids. Let's see. This is going to be the different R group, so I'm going to use R prime. And drum roll, there might be a carboxylic ion. Oh no, we got this one correct. All right, so if it's mixed with H2O, you're going to have two different carboxylic acids, as you can see. All righty. Perfect. Okay, let's continue. We have another symmetric anhydride. This time it's H2, H2N bonded to an R group. And we have an excess, so this is a the primary amine, I think, if I remember it correctly, if I remember functional groups well. So now we're just going to draw again our symmetric anhydride down here. I wonder if it could be seen. There we go. R, okay. Then R prime and H2. Oh, right. Excess. I forgot about that. I think on this one we just draw another one product thing. So, N, remove one of the hydrogens, but keep the R group. There we go. And what do we do with this leaving group, I wonder? I think what we have to do, that might be an anion. I think that might be a carboxylate anion. I can't remember. Let's just see what happens. Oh, we do get the carboxylate anion. We're kind of talking about it, so I think I'll let's let's throw ourselves a bone there and let's just count it. We just need to make sure we have that leaving group noted down next time. That one's all right. Alrighty, a few more to go, and we still have time. I think we're going to get through this. All right, so now we're on acid chlorides, and I need a new piece of paper. Acid chlorides, again, it's a carboxylic acid derivative. Instead of an OH here, we have a Cl, hence the name acid chloride. And this one, we're going to do NH3 and excess. Same rules apply with most of the derivatives, other than some of the weird things like carboxylic acids. They have some weird things, weird rules, but basically any derivative plus nitrogen group it will make something with that nitrogen group any of the other atoms bonded to it but without one of its hydrogens so i'm going to put the acid chloride near the top of this page but it looks like that's going to be in the way of the stand so i'm just going to try my best up here all right there we go there's our acid chloride nh3 ammonia and access and what i'm going to do is just Place the Cl with NH2. Now get our amide, and let's see if we get it correct. All right, we got our primary amide. Got that one right. All right, I'm going to tally it. Number 16, let's see what we got. Acid chloride, but this time it's... Oh, these are basically the same thing. This time it's a secondary. So we have NH and... R over here, R single prime and R double prime. So again, that's a second, that's a not a second degree, but a secondary amine. And now we're just going to do the same thing, replace the Cl with this reagent, but we're going to kick off one of the H's. So it's going to look something like this. N, and we have R single prime and R double prime. Again, those R groups are just different carbon groups, carbon chains, carbon substituents. All right, let's flip it over and see what we get. All right, we got our tertiary amide. Perfect. I think this is just, yeah, these are just basically the same things. Oh, this one is flipped over wrong. All right, this one is just a primary 
mean this time. So H2N single single prime are reacting with our acid chloride at the top. Sorry if you can't see that. There we go. So acid chloride reacting with primary amine. Again, replace the Cl with that N group. Keep all the atoms except for one of the hydrogens. That's what we're going to do. NH. And we're going to throw that single prime R on the, at the end. So we get our secondary amide from that reaction. Yep. All righty. All right, we're flying through these. Acid chloride and our carboxylic, carboxylate, not carboxylic, carboxylate anion. This one's very interesting because it will make a very strange product. It's one of those strange derivatives I was talking about. All right, let me just find the song to play in the background. All right, I'm going to play this one. This is not by Bach, this is by another classical composer. It's a march. All righty. Let's go and do this reaction, shall we? So acid chloride again. We have our acid chloride at the top and we have our carboxylate, carboxylate, or I guess how you, however you pronounce it, but it's carboxylate anion. So that, that, Oh, with a negative charge, and I think what we're going to do, we're just going to hack this on and replace that CL. We're going to get something wonky like this. There's an R. Keep that from the original. Here's the O. Here's that other carbonyl oxygen. And that R single prime. So look what we made. We made one of those anhydrides. Let's see if it's correct. Alrighty. You got that one down. That's one of the trickier ones, you know? Another acid chloride, this time H2 and pyridine, or however you say that. That's that one that's a ring and has like nitrogen in it. And I think there's a hydrogen too. Um, it's just used to um, get rid of the HCl that's made. The Cl is going to make an acid when it leaves, and it's going to mix in. The pyridine will take care of that for us. So if there's something like H2, Acid chloride, you'll need that base to, you know, do an acid base to get rid of that HCl in your reaction. Alrighty, I'm rambling on. Let's do this. Again, our acid chloride is up here, and we're going to react it with the H2O. I just shortened as pyridine as PY, just to save time. And I'm going to do the replacement of it like this. Oh, wait, why am I drawing a cyclohexane? We don't need that cyclohexane. I'm being crazy. Being silly. All right, gonna keep that from the original. Gonna hack off Cl, and I'm just going to put an OH. I think that's correct. Yep, we have a carboxylic acid as the product. Perfect. We're in the home stretch. Acid chlorine again, but this time with an alcohol. So. ROH. Again, we're still with the acid chloride. It hasn't changed. All right, this one I think it's just an ester. Again, alcohol derivative ester. Unless it was basic conditions, which would make the carboxylate anion. So R, O, keep that O. Replace the Cl with an O and the R from the alcohol. And I think we're finished with that one. All right, we got that one correct. This one is going to be a little bit tricky. This is a nitrile, but with one of these organometallic reagents. So we have some carbons with an Li or some carbons with MgBr. Either one will still be good with this reaction. Again, nitrile is when you have, this is a different, this is a different reagent. You have an R group. I should actually move it up here. You know, it saves space. You have an R group, a C and then that's triple bonded to an N, so that's a nitrile. And we have, I'm just going to use R, L, I, save space again, instead of writing all of the MGBR stuff. All right, I think what we do on this one is, I can't remember it correctly, but I think you go, that leaves. Hmm, this one's stumping me. Hmm. I can't, I honestly can't remember this one. 
to make ketone. It might make ketone. Do you know what? I think it might make ketone. So again, a ketone is an R, C, a carbonyl, and then bonded to either side is an R group. I think it might be that. The R from the organometallic goes to the other side of the carbonyl. Let's see. Oh man, we are correct. All right. Perfect. That was a that was a hard one. This one I'm gonna actually just mark with an arterisk or a star and remind myself to go back to it. Number eleven. I'm going to just circle that. That's an important one. All right. I'm gonna actually just mark it down as correct as well. All right, we have our nitrile again. This time we have something called D bell H with H2O. D bell H from previous chapters in my class in organic chemistry. Whenever you're reacting with D bell H, it makes an aldehyde. So aldehyde AL. So that's how I remember it. That's how we were taught how to remember it from the professor. And so I think this is just going to make an aldehyde. So actually, it's going to look very similar to the ketone that we made, but except for. One thing, this R group, which is carbons, it's just going to be replaced with the hydrogen. So let's just do that. D ball H, H2O, and R, C. Make that a carbonyl, H. And there's our aldehyde. Woohoo, we got it. All right, now we have something that has multiple steps, it looks like. And this isn't even a derivative or a nitrile, so RBR, that's a that's an alkyl halide. So RBR first reaction is with NaCN. So we have this nitrile group here. That's the C bonded to an N, but since it's near an Na, which is Na plus, that carbon would be a minus. So this one will kick off the Br as a leaving group. The Br is going to leave. And so to our R, we're going to get the C, and the N is going to come along with the ride. That's step one. So this is the NaCN. Step two, LiAlH4, which is a reducing agent. So reducing increases the amount of CH bonds, and or it could also decrease the amount of CZ bonds. Z is just an atom that isn't an H. On the other hand... An oxidizing agent would increase CZ bonds, so it would add more CO bonds or anything like that. Or it could also reduce the amount of CH bonds. So LiLH4 is a reducing agent, so we're going to probably add some more CH bonds or add more hydrogen in general. So what we're going to do, HO, because that's the other part of it, is we have our nitrile again, right? And I'm just going to add two H's to both of them. I think that's what we do in this reaction. And actually that becomes NH2. And you actually don't have to draw in the hydrogens off of a carbon in skeletal form. This is like not skeletal form, but if it was in skeletal form, we could just omit those hydrogens if we wanted to. But yeah, we're going to just add two H's to that and make that a single bond. Let's see if we're correct. Alrighty, I think that looks like our product. You know, you could omit the hydrogens, and I think we got it. This is step two, and yeah. Alrighty. That's a tricky one, because it's kind of like a synthesis. Alright, we have our nitriles again, and I'm just going to write RCN for the nitrile. We have our reducing agent. We have LiAlH4, which I was just talking about earlier. And of course, this is just going to become R and a C, and NH2, because we're going to add two hydrogens to the C, two hydrogens to the N. We're going to make that triple bond a single bond. I think this one's correct. All right, we got it. We got a primary amine. Perfect. All right. Nitrile again, this time basic conditions. H2O, OH, that's a hydroxide ion and it's going to be basic conditions or nitrile so an r and i think a c make that a carbonyl and i think this is going to be a negatively charged oxygen making this carboxylic anion carboxylate anion sorry about that i keep messing it up but we did get it correct
All right. Nitrile again, our old friend nitrile. This time H2O, but H plus, that means acidic conditions. Again, acidic conditions makes the carboxylate, the carboxylic acid. I'm now getting both of them mixed up. No, the carboxylic acid is from H2O in acidic conditions. There we go. Perfect. We have just a few more to go. Oh, we have our we have our alkyl halide again. So it's up here. This time we have a negative nitrile group. So again, that looks like a nitrile. I think this is actually called a cyano group, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but C triple bonded to N with on negative sign. This is just going to turn into, I'm just going to draw it on here. So the BR is going to leave. That C is going to bond to this already existing carbon chain, the R. And we're going to just keep the triple bond. And there's the end. Let's see if this is correct. All right, we got it. It's a nitrile. It's another one for the bank. All right, now this is carboxylic acid with NH3. So... And it's just saying that it's a base, so it's just NH3 again, no heat. We already did this one, and it's just going to be the carboxylate, an carboxylate anion. That was a simple one. We've already seen it, actually. All right, this one's kind of crazy because there's two products in this one. So we have a terminal alkyne. Now, an alkyne is when you have a triple bond in between two carbons. So let me draw a carbon, triple bond, another carbon, and an H. We don't put another R here because this is a terminal alkyne. Terminal alkynes are at the end of a chain. So this is going to be like the last carbon. And so after that carbon, of course, there's going to be one hydrogen because it's already triple bonded. Carbon likes to bond four times. So one bond to a hydrogen and three to another carbon to make our terminal alkyne. And then, of course, there's an R chain on this side. And we're going to use ozone. This is O3 and H2O. So ozonolysis. What you're going to do when you see ozone in some of these reactions in organic chem, you're going to split this. You're going to split that those pi bonds or that group of pi bonds. When you do this, I think what you get, I know you get CO2. That's one of the products, but it's not the main one. It's not the, it's not the, the shining star. It's one of the stars. It's a co-star in this movie about this reaction, but... It's not the main star. The main star will be an R, a C, an O, and an OH in the same molecule. So it would be in this re this arrangement as well. That makes a carboxylic acid. Let's see if we're correct. Carb acid and a CO2. Perfect. So we split it again. This side becomes... One of the sides will become the carboxylic acid and the other one just becomes CO2. Alrighty, that was, a, that was a doozy. I like that reaction, personally. I think it's pretty interesting. Alright, now we just got two reactions that look like they don't pertain to the carboxylic... The, sorry about that. The carboxylic acid derivative reactions, but they actually do if we do these products correctly. So this one I'm actually just going to draw over here. And so we have a benzene, and I'm going to just draw... I'm going to actually draw more multiple of these carbon chains, you know. I'm just going to draw something like that. So I'm going to just draw something that has a branch off of one of them like this, two branches off of them. This is an isopropyl. This one's an ethyl because it has two carbons, and this one's a methyl. So now we're going to react with KMNO4. And this is an oxidizing agent. So again, oxidizing agents will either, they could also do both of these things, but usually it's one or the other. They could either add CZ bonds, and again, Z is just any atom that isn't hydrogen, or they could also take away the H bonds. So this KMNO4, what we're going to actually do, this is a very interesting reaction. These carbons that are directly bonded to the benzene, Right here, right here, and right here. As long as they aren't quaternary carbons. A quaternary carbon would be something like this. Where you have where you have a 
carbon bonded four times to other carbons. That's an HCH3. These are all CH3s at the end. So this is a quaternary carbon. There are no hydrogens on a quaternary carbon. For this reaction, the, the benzene with some of these substituents on it and KMNO4, you're going to look for these benzylic hydrogens. So as you can see, these are regions with benzylic hydrogens because the carbon isn't bonded four times to other carbons. Here, it's bonded to three other carbons. So it has one hydrogen here. This was an ethyl. As you can see, it's two carbons. So it'll have two bonds. This benzylic carbon here, that's a carbon directly bonded to a benzene. Off to the side of it like that. It'll have two hydrogens. So those are two benzylic hydrogens there. The CH3, this methyl that's just bonded over to the benzene right here, will have three benzylic hydrogens. What we're going to do is all those regions with benzylic hydrogens at those benzylic carbons. So right here, right here, and right here, because all of them aren't quaternary carbons. They're still benzylics with hydrogens. We're going to just turn those into... Can you guess what we're going to do? We're going to turn them into carboxylic acid areas. So we're just going to redraw our benzene with that. We have benzylic carbon here with hydrogens. Okay, so we're going to turn that into a carboxylic acid group right there. That's not the technical term, but basically we're just going to replace that um, benzylic carbon with some hydrogens on it with an area that looks like a carboxylic acid. All right, so we're going to do it over here as well. Make sure I'm numbering my card. Yeah, all right. Then over here, so that was on this side. I'm just going to extend it out like that so it's just easier. There we go. So we have three regions that have that thing that's similar to carboxylic acid because those are three benzylic carbons that were bonded directly to the benzene, but they still had hydrogens on them. So again, we just oxidize them and get a bunch of carboxylic acids bonded chart we only did that simple example so let's look at it. that was longer and we got finally to our last one so we have an alcohol i'm just going to draw it over here roh that's alcohol again carbons then oh group and we have another oxidizing agent k2 cr2 o7 and h2so4 so this is again i think that's just a catalyst but this K2Cr207, that's going to be, again, an oxidizing agent. And I think what's going to happen here is that our R, hmm, I think this, I know this makes a carboxylic acid, I think. It has to. All right, I'm just going to draw the generic one. OH, there we go. Let's see if we're correct. Remove H's from the C bonded to OH and make the C a double O. Okay, so remove, let's draw this again. So remove H's from the C bonded to the OH. Okay, so in reality, this would actually look like this. I'm going to draw it out, OH. So this carbon that's directly bonded to the OH group and the alcohol will have two hydrogens on it. When we react it with this, I'm just going to do those quotation marks to say, hey, this is the same thing over here. And now we're just going to oxidize that carbon. There's the carbon that we're that's directly bonded to that OH. And now we're going to oxidize it. So we're going to turn it into a double bonded oxygen to that carbon. So now we have our carboxylic acid. All right. And that was the last of those flashcards. As you can see, we got through the whole pile. Perfect. All right, and here's the results. Yeah, 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 31 out of 35. Not bad. 31 out of 35. I don't know what that is as a... Let me see. Let's see what that is as a percentage. I know some of those other ones were kind of tricky, so we're going to have to still do a little bit of studying, of course. But let's see where that lands us. 31 out of 35. We're doing all those flashcards. I think there's 35 in there. There could be 36. I just miscounted them. Nope, there's 35. Let's see. 31 out of 35 is 88. 88. 
0.57 a bunch of numbers percent so i think that we did pretty good on that we just need to we just need to touch up on those ones that we missed you know 35 let's see that was them the amids and basically adding h3 here keep sorry about that you keep that in h2 there and you just replace this other side with an AH3 as well. Oh, you replace it with an OH. Sorry about that. I would have gotten that one correct. I mean, incorrect twice. So that one I'm going to have to study. Uh, 25. Let's go and see. 25s. Have these in order still. 25, 24, 25. Yeah, this is the carboxylate anion, I think. Again. Yep. 20 was another one that we missed. And this was symmetric anhydride alcohol. So I know it makes an ester and I think it makes a carboxylic acid. Alrighty, we got that one correct this time. That one wasn't really on screen. That was the 20 one that we missed. We also missed the 25, which was... This one right here, the carboxylic acid of the base, and this just makes carboxylate anion. So, all in all, I think it's a pretty good study session. Alrighty. I'm still going to do some studying, of course, tomorrow. And the test is in the afternoon, so I have the morning to um, patch up a few things, you know? Alrighty, that concludes the study stream of Organic Chem. Hope this was a little bit interesting and different from what I usually stream and interesting for uh, y'all as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Please get vaccinated. Please stay safe, do something nice for someone, and have a good rest of the evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all, and I'll see you again next time. All right, guys, bye. Thank you so much, and good night.